With this video I will create a dynamic Node.js site complete with a template and routing. This is the type of site that can be used for any web application, be it e-commerce, blogs, CMS, CRM and anything else that you can think of. Hi, I'm Ben Plesier and, like you, a fervent user of Wappler. In Wappler, I click on the new project icon. If this is your very first time using Wappler, you may not see this icon. Instead you may be confronted with this screen. If that is the case then you would choose to click on, create a new Wappler project. Either way, we'll bring up the same dialog. I choose a blank site. Here I enter the name of the project. I have called the project Mon de Chefs. The idea is to create a recipe sharing website that is a kind of simple content management system. In the next video I will explain more. For now on with the job. The project needs a folder to reside in. Because Wappler will create a local server inside the project folder, I can create the folder anywhere on my system. In this case I will create the folder on the desktop. Normally, I would create the project folder in a directory dedicated to my projects. I usually give the folder the same name as the name of the project for easy identification. I keep the default hosting and choose Node.js as the server model. When I click the Save button, Wappler wants a confirmation for the installation of the node packages. Depending on the processing speed of your system, this will take about 2 minutes. While waiting for Wappler to perform its task, I will set the project up. Clicking on the pencil icon shows the project settings dialog. Under the general tab, I leave all of the default settings with the exception of the user upload folder. When a user shares a recipe, they will most likely include a photograph of their creation. This is where the image file will go. The uploads folder is created inside the root folder which is called public. With few exceptions, this is where all static files and their folders should reside. Here we see that the link to the uploads folder is inside the public folder. And this is confirmation that the web root folder is indeed the public folder. Under the Frameworks tab, I again leave the default values. Under the Targets tab, all looks fine so I leave the default settings. A note about the web server URL. This will work only when the server is running. To verify that the server is running, you will need to see a green icon at the bottom of the screen. Fortunately, Wappler has finished creating the server environment in time for me to show the green icon. To explain. When you open a different Node.js project, the same web server URL is applied. This is because each Node.js project possesses its own server. As you close a Node.js project, the server will also shut down. Testing the local connection shows that all is well. I can now safely save the project settings. So, what has happened so far? At this stage, I have created a new project and set, or should I say, adjusted the project settings. The result is a running web server in two pages. One is called index, the other is called main. Each of these pages has an EJS extension. Why two new pages? What is an EJS extension? In answer to the latter, EJS simply stands for embedded JavaScript. It is in fact, a dynamic document that gets sent to the application server where it is converted into an HTML document. If you are familiar with PHP, this is very similar to what happens to a PHP document. In answer to the first question, Web servers are set up to display a default file in case no file name is given. The main purpose is for security. To explain. Here I have go to a random website and entered a URL to a folder. No file name. This takes me to the directory structure of that part of the site. To stop this from happening, web servers are set up to direct the user to a default page, universally called index.html or .php. Or whatever the server model. In case of the Node.js server model the default file is, index.ejs. This illustrates that you need to make sure that every directory in your site contains an index page, even if it's void of content. Right. Now for main.ejs. I'll close the bottom panel to give us extra space. I then choose main.ejs. This page has been constructed by Wappler and includes the frameworks that were stipulated in project setup. On the right, in the app structure panel, we see a node that is called, view. This is a div element that is a container for the content of the page. The next node, called layout body content, 
is in effect a dynamic include page. Stay with me while I explain further. I go to Site Manager and open the Project Folder panel. If you do not see what is shown here, make sure that the Pages and Dynamic tabs are selected. Selecting Pages in the panel shows the Index page in the lower section of the panel. Hovering over Index, I select the Pencil icon. This opens the Page Properties dialog. Here we see the name of the page, the type of page and the layout page. I close the dialog and select Layouts. In the lower section we see the main page. Hovering over Main, opens the Page Properties dialog as before. Here we see the name and type of the page. Although Wappler has called this page, Main, it can have any name that you can think of. The only consequence of changing this is that the name of the layout page must also be changed in the content pages. By now you must be thinking, all talk and no action. I agree with you. But it is important to know what is happening in the background. If anything goes skew whiff during the development process, you will need this information. I'll now add some content to the pages. For the layout page, I will add a navigation bar. For this, I select the content container and click the before button. Navigation bars usually sit at the top of the page. Under blocks and navigation, I choose one of the available navigation bars. I save the page. For the content page, I click the plus sign in the middle of the page. Then I add the usual. A container, a row and a column. Inside the column, I add a heading. I save the page. With the index page still selected, I open the browser. Notice that the index page contains the contents of the layout page as well as the contents of the index page. Pay special attention to the URL. This points to the location of the site and has shown the default page called index. Back in Wappler, I open the routing panel. Here we see a forward slash. When the forward slash is selected, it shows the properties belonging to the forward slash. In layman's terms, this says that when a site is opened without a file name, open the layout page called main and attach a page named index for the content. To put it another way, both dynamic pages are sent to the application server. Node.js Express combine the two pages and outputs them as a single HTML page. This is it. With this video I have shown the creation of a dynamic Node.js site, including a layout or template page and a content or landing page. You have also seen the routing panel which showed the index or landing page. With the next video, I will outline the project that I plan to create in this series. Stay tuned. Thank you for watching.